Hey everyone, what is going on? We're going out today to do some food plotting out at Scott's. We're gonna start doing some fall food plots. It is August 12th and we already have like several plots planted in like clover and sorghum. We did sorghum this year, we did corn last year, but like the sorghum came because the deer were just eating the corn right off the ground. There was no there was no corn. I mean they would eat the stock and everything. So we're going out. My brother is the one that's like in charge of this so he knows a lot more about it than I do. That's where we're going. We're going out to his place. He owns about 34 acres. Um, it's not a lot of land guys. I mean there's not a lot of land to manage there if you want to know what I'm saying. We don't have we're just the average people. I mean, we have we have ground to hunt because people give us permission, and we have ground like my brother's property and my pap's ground. But we don't own. I mean, we're not by any means like owning like we don't have a lot of acreage. We don't have a lot. Of, we don't have thousands of acres to hunt. I mean, if you want to count it all together, I mean, we might come up with a good chunk, but it's not. It's still not still not enough to like say manage a deer like a buck we see bucks in the early season for a while but like it's tough to keep them we do our best to keep them there but when a rut is on a deer can go wherever it wants I mean we've shot bucks that we've never even had on camera I mean that's just how it works um, I don't know I just want to tell you guys a little bit about what we have going on. My brother, like I said, he only owns a small, a small like plot of, of ground, but we do our best with it. That's a, that's the idea. Doing your best with what you have is what is going to make you successful. Knowing what you have and what you can work with, where those deer are bedded, where those deer are coming to feed, what's their pattern. That's what's going to make you successful. Staying out of the woods, staying on the edge. Don't bump the deer out of the bedding area. Don't go into the bedding area. That's what's going to make you a successful bow hunter. We've had good luck out here. I actually, the one video of Luke's buck, if you guys watch that on our YouTube channel, it is at Scott's place. And we were on, he was on a field edge, and he's, this buck, you can see on video, came down, he cruised past me and Levi. We were at the top field edge, they were at the bottom field edge. He was chasing a doe running all he could all the way down through Scott's grid up field and down to where they were down in Scott's bottom that's where we stay out of we're on the edge of that and they success they harvested deer it was a good shot Luke made a good shot you can watch it on video I can put the link in the description but it was just like you can see like once the rut comes on guys you want to be you want your scent to be limited and you want those deer to be feel comfortable. It's the same in your early season. You want to keep your, you want to do what you can and get out. That's the whole idea. So today, stick with us. I'm going to show you guys what we're going to be doing. I'm going to show you uh, Scott. I'll let Scott explain like what he has to plant, what all is going on. Looks good. Well, we're getting close to getting it in anyhow. Just hit it with the two bottom, really tore it up. And then chisel plowed. Now we're gonna put some beets and turnips in. Yeah, tell them all you already, is that what you're putting in right now? I'm going to put, uh, and fertilize it. Yeah. This needed lime. I bought some lime too, but I should have limed it. I was trying to tell them what we had for early season plots already, but tell them again because I didn't know what all you had out here. I said about sorghum, but. I planted a sorghum for cover. I put power plant 
and clover in with it. But the power plants basically, or the sorghum's for cover, so they'll walk it. And then there's beans, clover, and uh, that power plant has a nice mix of a couple different things, but they're already tearing it apart. But And then I got a fairly, I got probably a acre, acre and a half clover plot right in the center and a small clover plot right at that tree that we hang in. It's a, just a kill plot and it looks really nice. So now we're just gonna throw a little fall mix in here. Uh, I could have bought it from like Whitetail Institute, but I just went into Farm Bureau and got my own seed. And uh, we're gonna get it in today before we leave for Canada next Friday for a fishing trip. So it's all done. And it'll be about five weeks till first day of archery and it should be looking good till then. I told him though, I said, we only, you only have 34 acres here and we're just doing the best of what we have. I said, trying to explain to him what we had going on, but. For being 35 acres, it's really got pretty much everything a whitetail would need or want. Uh, cover, ella cover, bedding. I told him we stay out of the bedding and we hunt edges and Small creek bottom, really thick, some apple trees in it. Uh, this is a, probably about 12 to 14 acres of, of growed up old field. No one's touched it with a piece of equipment whenever I bought it for like 40 years. So it's got thorns, locust, high grass, and then I just sort of carved my own food plots into where I wanted it. And then we hunt the edges, uh, play the wind, hunt the edges. That side of the property is all wooded. It was log I logged off two years ago. So there's cover over there and we stay out of that. And then just let them come out and then we'll just keep picking at the edges. That's when you got something small, you don't want to bust them out. And plus what, what's around me really helps. The neighbors are good. Uh, we get along good with the neighbors and everything works out well that way. So, but yeah. So this is what he has done already. I don't know how good you guys can see this, but pretty well tilled up. This is what happens when you hit a deer on this a dirt is, bike. This, this is this is why we we make these food plots to, to make to not let this happen. So I'm pretty sure in the intro I said that I didn't that I, he didn't plant corn, but he did plant corn. It's actually coming out pretty good. Are you listening? Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. All done. Food plots are in. Well, maybe now they can hear us. Wow, By the way, we're better, all done. Better audio with the tractor. A little show. bit, a little bit. Hey, we're not millionaires here. Equipment's not the best, but get some in. That's all that really matters. What do you mean? It's not the best. Look at this custom duct tape seat right here, my boy. Like I said, <laughs> whatever works. What are you doing? Let's <laughs> get something to eat. Yeah, Sounds good. Go. Okay, just to let you know, this is going to be the end of this vlog. We just wanted to let you know what we were doing on the food plot side of things and uh, that we are actually doing something to prepare for deer season other than just bass fishing. But we'll catch you on the next one. Levi. Okay. Are you listening?